Okay, so Mark here from Rock and Load, and this afternoon I am joined by singer-songwriter and LA native Sophia Marie, who's just recently dropped a new single, What a Waste, about an American travelling back to London to recant her steps over a lost love. Sophia, how are you? I'm doing well. Um, I have my finals going on right now at Georgetown, so I'm just trying to finish those up uh, before I start the summer and um, doing a summer program in Italy and hopefully go back to London this summer. So I'm just enjoying my last days as like a junior on campus. Yeah, you, you seem to have a bit of a crazy um, life going on there between studying music uh, and everything else. So tell us a little bit about yourself, a bit, a bit of background information. Uh, I, I believe you are originally from LA. Yeah, I'm from Los Angeles, um, from Hermosa Beach um, and Rolling Hills. Um, which is like Palos Verdes in LA County. So it's like, it's a 40 minutes from Hollywood, but I just say like, LA. no one else knows where I'm actually from. So I just say LA. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. And um, yeah, growing up, um, I'm coming from a family of seven people. So I have four siblings, which is crazy. Um, recently, kind of, not really, I like 10th grade, so sophomore year of high school, I got really into um, politics. Um, so that's kind of what informed my decision to want to study at Georgetown doing international politics. Um, and then when quarantine hit, I got, I was like forced myself, I was like, I really want to learn an instrument. Um, so I learned the guitar and I was in this conflicting mode of like, I really like music a lot, but I'm, you know, pursuing my political studies. I also always loved acting. And when I was actually applying for college, um, I was having to like, choose between do I want to stay in LA like UCLA, UC Berkeley, do like the theater route or do I want to go to Georgetown, do the whole like political route. Um, ultimately obviously chose Georgetown. So it's been kind of hard to I guess balance all of those interests of like acting, writing, singing, um, and then also obviously politics. So it's been fun. I've learned that you don't really have to choose and like specialize so early and you can kind of do everything as long as you find the time for it. Um, but it is really hectic sometimes. I'm sure. I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. Tell me about L.A., though, to grow a place to grow up in. Um, is there such a thing as a typical L.A. native or is it because such a diverse culturally cultural place? I don't know. I think like L.A. today is. I don't I don't know if there's a universal experience. I feel like I'm kind of not a typical L.A. girl and that I really don't like the beach, which is really weird. I love, I love like, wearing like bikinis and stuff. Like that's fun. I love bike riding like on the strand, um, which is like right on the coast of LA, but I don't like like the water. And so my friends would always do like junior lifeguards and they'd always like go to the beach, swim and everything. I hated it. I hate the sun in general. That's why I love London, London is windy. So um, <clears throat> yeah, it's weird. Like I feel like I'm not a totally like typical LA girl and I really don't like the sun. I do like the whole entertainment industry. Like I do like the acting and stuff. So in that way, I'm pretty typical, I guess. Um, the only problem is I feel like LA today is like getting really superficial and fake and obsessed with like Instagram and like, I don't know, um, social media culture, which is really sad for me. Um, so it's weird to like be from Los Angeles, but then also to like, to like have people that come to Los Angeles looking for like stardom. Um, so I feel like there's kind of a contrast between us because like I just happen to live there <clears throat> and then there are people that like come there wanting LA to give them something. Um, and I feel like I can't, I can't really relate to that. Um, and I can feel like it can be really fake sometimes. And that's why I like to escape from LA. And um, I kind of have this weird relationship with Los Angeles at the same time. I love it. I love the romanticizedness of it. I love like when like people like Lana Del Rey speak of Los Angeles. Um, but it's kind of, I feel like recently turned into something that's very superficial kind of. So I don't know. Yeah, it's it has, I suppose, like everything, um, social media has changed so much. And as you say, um, I, I, they are from the outside, as you say, people could be quite superficial in an, an environment which is really based around stardom, based around um, fame. So uh, when people are just gravitating towards that, they, they assume that's, that's the, the persona you have to put out there as well once you once you live that life yeah I think <clears throat> I don't know I just I think people really 
they expect like LA to like give them something and they want to like engage in this culture with other people. Um, and it can just really feed off of one another. And I think it can lead to something really fake. So that's why, I don't know why, but like, I love traveling to London because I feel like there's some kind of like, there is some kind of foundation there where I feel like LA doesn't really have any like roots, but in London, there's like, a, there's still a culture of like mannerisms and like, I don't know, it's not so, it's not so young. And um, it's, it seems very like formed in the way that you're supposed to live life. Yeah. I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know. It's very different. I just feel like it's more historic. And so people have more regard for like institutions. Um, and so that's what I feel different about that in LA. Um, I love LA though. Like I feel like I'm being mean to it. It's just that like, I don't, it's hard. It's hard to be from there and like see it kind of morphing into something you don't really want it to be. So Yeah. And is, is there a pressure when you're in LA to be part of that sort of um, the, the, the movie industry, et cetera, and stuff like that there? Because in other cities, you'll probably have um, fads where maybe, say, Netflix or other companies may go in for a couple of years and they may sort of grow into something which has a bit of a movie industry. But you guys have lived with that for over a century now, so is, it must be completely different. Yeah, I'd say that it's weird because, like, I did grow up in a suburb, so it wasn't, like, totally L.A., L.A., but there is, like, a lot of... Um, like, if you want to go into acting and stuff, it's like, well, you have UCLA right there. You have really great, like, institutions. You want to go into fashion, you have, like, fit em. Um, But, like, UCLA has an amazing theater program. USC, also University of Southern California, has an amazing theater program. So I think when you live in Los Angeles, it's very, um, it's like, a, it's a valid, I guess, a valid thing to go into. Um, not that it's ever not valid, but, like, it's just, it's more um, accessible, obviously, when you're from Los Angeles because you have a bunch of um, industry and there also music the same. Um, so it's like when I was growing up, I loved theater. Um, so I really had to choose between did I want to pursue that or, or pursue music. But yeah, I think people in Los Angeles, there is that um, entertainment aspect. You'll like meet people who will like have someone they know that's like in the industry. <laughs> I always joke with my like um, parents. I'm like, I'm so mad you guys aren't like, music stars or like movie stars it would have been so much easier yeah. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> like meet people that know people it's yeah. not you like come across someone that's like maybe an actor or like a producer like you know people that maybe their family it's in isn't it or they know someone that knows someone yeah yeah and um and, and education then you're talking about school and stuff so is the likes of theater and drama in in every school is that something that's touched on as a subject yeah, I'd say um, definitely, but like where I'm from, every school has like a theater program. Um, we weren't a performing arts school, but we did have a really good uh, theater program, which was nice. Um, then you can also go to like LA schools that were specifically an acting program or a theater program. Um, my school was just a regular school, um, but it did have a really nice, robust theater program where a lot of people joined into it. Um, but yeah, that's definitely a thing. I don't all the all the like high schools around me had theater programs, and also of course in college, most colleges have theater programs. At least in DC where I am, we have a really awesome theater program. You can take theater classes, you can engage in extracurricular theater. So that's been nice to have, even if I don't really study it per se. I'm always kind of involved with it and doing like films and stuff. Yeah, yeah, because I think the perception is obviously from outside of the US is that every school is like glee and uh, fame. <laughs> People running around in leotards with uh, uh, headbands on, dancing to songs and bursting into songs <laughs> every opportunity. No, literally, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so you yourself, then you moved cross country to Georgetown. That must have been quite a change. Yeah, no, it was a crazy change. And that's why I based my... Um, first single Venice Beach to DC off of it's like coming from this West Coast environment where people are wearing like bikinis and flip flops and short shorts and then I come to the East Coast um, and there's like this very pre-professional atmosphere there um, people wearing like you know very like J Crew vests Ralph Lauren um, ties and everything and just feeling like you don't really fit into this atmosphere and you're trying to to pave your way you have friends that are like going into consulting wanting to be politicians and um <clears throat> at first i kind of thought i wanted to be a politician 
but I don't think I really want to anymore. Um, it's funny like how, how that changes, but also how, how you're perceived by other people. I remember my first like presentation I had to do for Georgetown. Everyone like had their pre-professional clothes and I was like wearing like really cute, like little like high rise jean outfit. And I was like, I need to get like actual, I need to get like an actual professional outfit because this is not, this is not doing it. Um, but yeah, I like wear like crazy pink, like all the time. And I really stand out. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the crazy kid from LA. <laughs> I had like my, like, oh my God, oh my God, I love Los Angeles. And so people sometimes, I feel like you can kind of be underestimated. Um, there's this kind of thing, culture in Los Angeles, like in America, which I think other like people and other foreigners know about through like movies like Legally Blonde, but there is a kind of like, looking down upon the, you know, casual, not as sophisticated LA person who like sits by the beach, is from Malibu, Elle Woods kind of trying to get into this like very stuffy, pre-professional atmosphere. Um, are they gonna, are they gonna make it? Are they really gonna succeed here? Um, uh, so that's kind of what I experienced. I didn't experience that fullest extent, but I wanted to play into that and exaggerate it. Yeah, yeah. You've almost sort of replaced one obsessive sort of thing with LA being built around Hollywood to Washington being obsessed with politics. It's um, two very, very intense sort of cities for those reasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, DC is crazy. It's like everyone in DC has an opinion about something. Everything is politically charged. Mm. Um, it's what I wanted. It's what I wanted when I was choosing to study. I was like, I want to be in an atmosphere where like people talk about politics like all the time. And it's, it's almost nauseating here. It's like everyone, no matter what you study, they'll be like, oh, let's go to the Supreme Court. Let's go like protest this, do something. Let's go to the White House today. Let's go to this museum. Um, so it's super nice. I feel like everyone really cares about like what's going on in the world. Um, and then doing international politics is great because you have all the embassies that are here. Um, so actually I'm an intern right now at the French embassy. Um, my grandmother's French and I speak French and the, I'm in the school of foreign service at Georgetown. So you have to be proficient in a language before you graduate. And I studied abroad at Trinity College um, this past fall, for my junior fall, which was amazing. I loved it so much, but I had to be proficient in French before I left for that. So I've been doing a lot of that um, work at the embassy and um, that's been really fun. And it just, it's nice to be in an atmosphere where like all the embassies are, um, are here in DC. Like they're all like, literally I walk 10 minutes from my campus and I can go to work um, as my, at my internship, which is awesome. So yeah. not only domestic politics, but like the international scene. You have so many like foreign nationals that are in DC um, doing their work, doing diplomacy, doing their, you know, work for their ambassadorship, cultural attaches. Um, so it's super awesome. Yeah. And tell me about the, the, the Georgetown thing. You're saying you're a junior. So what way does that work within the education system over there? Just for somebody over here, maybe wouldn't be familiar. Basically, a lot of Americans do college for new university, sorry, for four years. Um, so I know it's kind of different, like in London, people might be doing for like three years or something, but my track is four years. So this is my third year. So this is the end of my third year. So I'm almost going into my final year. Um, so that's a junior. Okay. okay. And, um, you, you touched on staying over in Dublin. How, how do you find that cultural difference then obviously living in a city like Ireland and Dublin compared to LA or Washington? Yeah. I just like, I had been obsessed with it. I watched normal people which is like one of my favorite TV shows ever. And it was like filmed on Trinity, the main guy which is Trinity. I really, um, I watched Once Upon a Time, like Captain Hook, and I was like in love with the Irish accent. And so I went there with my dad when I was like 15 and I went to Trinity actually and visited. And I was honestly contemplating like applying there for four year a university, um, but I thought study abroad would suffice. Um, it was a hard decision because I'd lost so much time with COVID. But I was like, no, I really need to go to Ireland. And it was so amazing. Like, I think it was great to, to be like an artist starting off and going to, to Ireland because everyone there is like musical in some way. You just like feel the musical ambiance in Ireland. Like someone is a, you know, a guitar player, like a producer or an artist or songwriter or something. Like it just is very musical. And you have like, you know, people like busking in the streets and stuff. Um, Grafton Street and it's just it's super great to be an, like a, an artist and be there and live there um, so that was super fun I was really engaged in the theater um, societies there Dublin player DU players which is awesome met a lot of friends there like theater groups did more like European studies 
obviously because Ireland's part of the EU, um, so a lot of like European Union studies, political violence is my concentration is like in international security. So a lot of like, um, how, why do wars start? How can we, you know, solve civil wars, international wars, interstate wars? Um, but it was amazing to be out there. And then I found an Irish producer that produced What a Waste and my next single coming out, Menace in Venice. Um, that was awesome. I took a train to Cork, like literally recorded for like eight hours the next day in his studio. And then I like left the next morning to make it for a 9.30 a.m. class at Trinity. So that was <laughs> fun. And it was like two hour train. Yeah, yeah. A pretty intense session by the sound of it. Um, and so like you, you touched on, you only recently, well, you only recently picked up a guitar, but obviously what, what's the situation then with you on music? When did you really start to fall in love with music and want to get involved? I'd say I started, I always like was writing a lot um, when I was younger and I'd make these like dumb little melodies in my head that like weren't really fully formed because I didn't have an instrument to go along with it. But when COVID started, I was like, I've always wanted to learn how to play an instrument. Like, I feel like it's great to like supplement your lyrics with an instrument, um, just so much easier. <coughs> Sorry. And then, so when quarantine started, I was like, there's really no reason why I shouldn't like just learn. I have so much time on my hands. So I started right when COVID hit, I started taking guitar lessons with my sister's guitar teacher. I took her guitar <coughs> and then I started making songs like August of 2020. So it's almost been like two years it's like making songs, just cranking them out, being like utterly obsessed. And once I started, I just like can't stop. I just like write everything I'm feeling like all the time. I brought two guitars to college and I just like always write all the time. Yeah, yeah. And so um, as far as the like the, the music on, on the singles, for example, the samples and the drums and stuff like that there, do you just bring in lyrics, et cetera, to somebody and then get somebody to work with you to put that behind you? Yeah, I basically do like the, the chords. Like I create the song like on the guitar acoustic or electric <coughs> and then i just go i find well i found my first producer for my debut ap called foreigner when i was in los angeles um pitched him like my songs we selected what he thought were like the three best and then he brought in like a drum drummer um a bassist and then i was able to like be in that process and like um you know shape like what i want to hear and stuff and then for um when i was in court he also brought in like um a different guitarist to play um parts of like what a waste which is like the electric sound that you hear there um and you know do all of his awesome producer magic um and then like he'd like send it to me like rough drafts and stuff and i'd be like oh i like this i want more whistles or whatever um so that was like super fun to be in that process like through emails and stuff um but obviously <clears throat> once i like gave it to them they kind of like made it their own which is awesome because i get to like hear what it turns into and yeah. what it like exactly what I wanted like what a waste was so um emotional for me that to hear it fully produced was like crazy and I was like walking down no what's the street in Dublin <laughs> I like O'Connell Street yeah I remember listening to it and I just like started crying it was like 11 a 11 p.m and I was like this is so beautiful I love it I was so proud yeah yeah it's 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 a strange thing isn't it obviously as you say going from um writing a song on acoustic guitar to that finished product and hearing it back uh your your, your ideas sort of realized it's so nice it's like you've always i think i like music so much because unlike film and stuff it's like you can do it yourself and um you can like write a song you just Need like four chords you can write a song and i write really personal songs so i feel like i can't really have anyone write for me because they it just like wouldn't work or i can't really write for other people because i feel like i'm so weird and strange that like it wouldn't <clears throat> it wouldn't fit for other people but that's what's so nice about like the um i can wanting to do music is that like with filming and i wanted i was like from an act from like the age 17 i was like i want to act how do i act and it's like, well, you need like a director, you need a cameraman, you need a PA, you need all these people, you need other actors. Um, I would like write for myself and I got like a camera, but it's like, it's really hard to like fully actualize a film on your own. Um, but doing music is like, you just need your story. You need an instrument, you need to know how to play. You need like four chords, you can do it. Um, so it's nice to have a producer come in because <clears throat> I felt like <laughs> a lot of my life, I was kind of doing my 
songwriting just by myself. Um, and it was nice to have someone to like be collaborative in that process. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, again, everything's in education. So the, the producing side of things and maybe even taking recording and stuff like that there, it's, it's just another level of education you need to take on board. And you already have a full plate by the sound of it. So if you can hand that stuff over to somebody else, it's not, not a bad thing. Yeah, no, I, I definitely need to learn how to do it. Um, <clears throat> when I get time to, I will definitely learn. Because um, I think it's nice to like know how to produce your own music um, and maybe branch into other instruments. Um, that would be cool too. <clears throat> maybe the bass, the bass is so lit. I'm excited. Maybe I can try <laughs> that. So I definitely want to like know how to produce for myself, even if I don't really want to like put that work out just so that I can have it more fully formed and kind of know the direction I want my music to take. Um, that will be when I have more time. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, as you say, like it's it, you know, the process is really is an evolution. So over the next 12 months or 24 months, your songwriting style and you as an artist could really develop. So it's good to be able to do it yourself and keep track of that. Yeah, no, I feel like my, I feel like my music right now, my first, like my EP was very like, oh my God, fun, flirty, but like, I want to delve into like deeper and be like sad and tragic, like Lana Del Rey. She's great. So I feel like What a Waste is more sad. Um, so I'm glad that I got that out because that's kind of how I feel like my music maybe is going because I'm yeah. kind of with love and everything. <laughs> yeah, I noticed you have a blog, The Hopeless Romantic. Yes, yeah, yeah. I haven't posted in a while, but yeah. So basically, um, yeah, I've been writing since like, a long time i just like to like write my thoughts on love i'm like obsessed with love romantic love specifically um and so i'm in like i finished the rough draft of my book that's coming out later this year but i'm working with cool titles publishing agency in um, beverly hills so that's been really fun <clears throat> it's basically like a, a series of collection of like essays short stories memoirs all about like love and um i feel like those are great because songs you get like you get a little snippet into it you maybe get like you know two verses a bridge a chorus to say something whereas like in memoirs you get to say so much you can write as much as you want you can write 10 pages of the same subject if you want to so that's a lot more freeing i feel so it's nice to have that even if it's not you know accompanied by music but to have that in in my repertoire is really nice because i guess yeah. yeah i think i think sometimes songs can be like a snapshot in time as well you know, reflective of, of where you were at that particular time. And then obviously, as you say, with writing, you can, you can expand so much more. Yeah, and you can like look back on it and you can reflect on the experience itself. It's really nice with writing. Um, that's what I, I've loved to do with the writing. Um, and though I have to do those edits, but I'm doing finals and I'm like, I don't want to do them right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so how does the, the head over the heart win with, with all the stuff that you're doing between the politics, which is obviously a, a professional career and the artistic side, which is obviously clearly fighting against it. I know it's hard. It's like very, it's like, what is realistic? It's like, well, I don't know. I experienced the whole, I was like, okay, everyone at college is like, oh, I have this in internship this summer. I'm doing this thing. And I even applied for like this master's program for security studies at Georgetown. But I was like, do I want to like do this stuff? Like, I have no idea. Like, it's so difficult to choose. And as I said, like my friends, you know, a lot of them are already like going into have like jobs set up for consulting and um, <clears throat> what do you want to do like polit political wise? And I just don't know, like they want to go to law school, a lot of my friends. And I'm just like, I don't know if I really want to spend that like time and energy. Like I feel like right now I should be doing what I like to do. So I'm kind of just doing whatever feels right. Um, I'm learning a lot either way. I learn about the world in my classes. I learn about the European Union and French politics and hopefully get my dual French citizenship through the embassy. I'm learning how to be more fluent through French. Maybe that's probably helpful in my music if I wanna branch out into French. Um, yeah, I really have, I'm trying to like see if it works. Um, I wanna do it. And then if it doesn't work, I always have something to like fall back upon. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Because um, the, the reality is that with the modern music industry anyway, um, it's a very, very different landscape than it was many years ago where, you know, you, you would have been looking at putting an, an album touring massively. But most modern artists now can simply record singles, drop a single once a month or every couple of months and keep themselves current and just keep ticking over that way. So it does allow you flexibility. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm doing. I really hope to like play, though, once I have more time, like over the summer, I really 
want to play in like Los Angeles or when I go out to London or something. Um, but yeah, I've been doing like some open mics at my university and stuff because I was working with the record label here um, or student record label, sorry, at Georgetown. But yeah, I definitely want to branch out to like actual doing live shows. Um, but I have my next single coming out and then my music video coming out that I filmed at Georgetown during our spring break. So that's super fun. I'm so excited for that. But I just hope to, you know, keep releasing more things, keep producing more music that I have because I have like hundreds of songs that I need to like get out there eventually. That's bursting out of you at the moment. Yeah. And so when does your academic year finish? Well, technically my classes have ended, but I have finals uh, until like May 14th. And then I go to Italy for a summer abroad program about like Machiavelli international politics. So it's like using Machiavelli's uh, theories and like applying it to like real world situations. Um, <clears throat> uh, so like we have two of the professors from the government and one professor that's actually currently teaching my nuclear weapons class is going with me. So I'm really excited for that. Doesn't sound heavy at all. It just sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> Villa though. Georgetown has like a villa that used to be the Rockefellers in Florence, so we get to stay there. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's more like it. Yeah, pool parties and uh, a bit of crack, I'm yeah, sure. Exactly. <laughs> well, look, uh, I'll leave it there for you. Um, thank you very much for your time today. Great pleasure talking to you. Yeah, thank you so much. This was so fun. Thank yeah, so and as I say, uh, best of luck with the rest of it. Like, God knows what we'll see coming from you over the next 12 or 24 months. It'll be on multiple platforms, no doubt. Yes, definitely. Yeah, well, best luck again. Thanks again for your time today, Sophie. Bye. Take care. Cheers. Thank you. Bye.